In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the WRN wave-based PoE NVRs. Here you can see the front and back of the NVR. On the front, we have our power and status lights as well as a USB port. On the back, we have our 8 or 16 PoE ports to connect your camera to, as well as a uplink labeled Network 2, as well as another port on the same switch as the camera subnet labeled Network 1. In addition, we have our USB ports for plugging in things like a keyboard and mouse. We have our alarm input output, and then our HDMI and VGA monitor outputs. So to get things started, after the unit boots up, we're prompted to set a new password for the user. So type in your password, then enter it a second time, and then log in. To get things started, the first thing you'll want to do is configure your network addresses by going to the settings menu, or on the top right, you can click on the network icon, choose your network adapter, and click the settings button. There you'll see your two different network adapters. You can click the gear. You'll see the information displayed. And you can click on the IPv4 change it from DHCP to manual as needed depending on your configuration. Make sure you enter in your IP address, your subnet mask, and your default gateway, and your DNS. If you made any changes, make sure you hit apply, and then you can do the same thing for the second network adapter. If you made any changes, you should click the toggle to disable and then re-enable the network adapter. On the application bar on the left or in the applications menu, we have the wave client and the configuration tool. Go ahead and click on the configuration tool icon and you'll be prompted to enter in the password that you already used to log in to the operating system. Here's the configuration tool. You'll see a couple easy steps. First, it's going to show you the IP addresses of the unit. You can enable or disable the DHCP server. You can specify the starting and ending IP addresses for that server. And you can put in the maximum number of users or leases it allows to have and the lease time and your DNS settings. Confirm your changes on the, before heading to the next page. And then next, it's going to scan your network for cameras. Now, it might take a minute for this to happen because if you change any of your network settings or if you just turn on DHCP, the PoE ports are going to boot up, the cameras then need to boot up, the cameras need to get an address. So this could take up to a minute. And if nothing comes back, you might need to hit the rescan button to have it scan a second time. If your camera is brand new, it will say under status, need password. Select the camera and then enter in the new password for that camera. You'll have to enter it twice. The password rule is shown here. It has to be eight characters or more, complex password with multiple character sets. Then just wait a minute for the password to get pushed to the camera. You can hit rescan if you need and then within a minute it should come back and show that it is connected. If you have cameras that have already been configured you would enter in their password and hit the connect button. If it says not connected, it means you might have an IP issue where you can't communicate to that device. Here, here you'll see we're entering in the password. 
and now it shows connected. So now we know we're good. The camera's been configured. If you needed to change camera's IP address settings for, or change from DHCP to manual mode or vice versa, you can do that from here. And you also have the ability to change a camera's password in case you need to modify that. So it's very flexible what you can do here. And then you hit the next button, you confirm that you want to move on, and then you can scan a QR code to find out more information from our quick start guide of how to configure the Wave VMS. From there, we're done with the configuration tool and we can launch the Wave client. This can be done on this unit or on another client on a different PC. You'll see it says new server. Go ahead and select that tile. You're gonna select the option to set up a new server. You can put in the server's name and then you can hit the advanced system settings button. Here you'll see we have the option to enable or disable auto discovery. Typically most people want that enabled to discover the cameras on the network. And then we need to put in an administrator password, the owner password for this wave system. Again, it has to be a complex password and it shows you your IP address to confirm it there and now we're logged in. Then we'll just need to wait a minute for the server to discover all of the devices on your, on your network. And you'll see it will discover the IO device, the alarm in and out on the back of the unit. You need to enable that the first time by clicking this button. And then we'll wait again another moment for my cameras to be discovered. Now the cameras will have a lock icon because it doesn't know the password for the cameras. So you can go ahead and click on the button or right click on it and go to camera settings, click on credential, enter in the password. You might get prompted the first time for your first camera to set your storage location, just hit okay for that. And then you'll need to give it a good 30 seconds for the camera to authenticate and you'll see live video. Next steps we can do is we can go to the main menu and system administration, licenses, and we can see our four professional licenses that come with the unit. If we need to load any additional licenses, we can do that here, or we can activate a four channel demo license. We can right click the camera, go to camera settings. We can go to recording. We can enable recording to use a license. We recommend that you use the motion plus low res option, and then you can apply that to the timeline. Uh, you can adjust what days of the week or hours of the day you want to record that way. This way you have a continuous low resolution recording plus high resolution recording when motion is detected. You can also configure your pre-event and post-event recording duration, as well as your minimum and maximum recording retention if you have specific needs. On the motion tab, you can adjust the motion detection zones and sensitivity. We recommend that motion be enabled and on the secondary stream. For easy remote access, you can go to the main menu, system administration, wave sync, and you can create a wave sync account if you don't already have one and link your system to the cloud. It's a free service that allows you for easy remote access. From the system administration menu, you can also back up your configuration, your database for recovery purposes. You can also go to updates and check for any software updates available. To learn more about this and other exciting Hanwha products, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at hanwhasecurity.com.